in 2023, you said you did how much? 16 million. 16 million. Yeah. Dang. How long after that did you go on Shark Tank? Three months later. I've had an offer on the table way okay. too long. All Tell right. me right so, now um, if to, you would to, like to move forward or not. All sharks are still in. Alexio has two offers on the table, one from Kevin O'Leary and another from Kevin Hart and Barbara for his company, Transformation Factory. So who actually invested in you? Mark Cuban and Kevin Hart, they uh, partnered up together. That's incredible, bro. Yes, yes, thank you. For you to get them to invest in your idea, that pitch had to be amazing. What's going on, Sharks? My name is Alexio Gibson. I was born and raised in the Bahamas, and I am here seeking $500,000 for 5% equity in my company. Ooh. I devalued my company just to work with them, because originally I wanted uh, to sell 5% for 500,000, which would have put me at about hey. 10 million evaluation. So you value your company then at 10 million? Yes. I'm an influencer. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Not, okay. Not, I mean, yeah, I would say so. Like be yeah. Simone or like Pinky or something like that, but I got a little influence. Yeah, I agree. What are those conversations like? At that time, we started running ad campaigns. She had the strawberry banana, so that, that flavor went crazy. That was our number one selling book back then. We made another two mil within like 60 days after our first mil. And she like tapped on the jar with this spoon and she's like, hey, your, your girl, girl told me you can't get it up. up. This, this could help. help. <laughs> <laughs> it was hilarious. Does that help you? Oh yeah, it's a libido. Situation? Yeah, it's a it's it's a libido Reese. enhancer. <laughs> Reese, it's, come on, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't even know. I should, like, this is gonna blow my deal. Uh, <laughs> I actually I strongly dislike sequels. Really? Oh my gosh! I want you to try it. Oh, that's a big that's a big bite right there. <laughs> see what's going on first. Welcome to another edition of the Social Proof Podcast, man. We find amazing people, dope people who have receipts. You've got receipts, right? Yes. Like real success? <laughs> yes, real success. Okay, this is exciting. <laughs> I'm happy to have this conversation. Uh, we have Alexio in the building, uh, one of the most successful Shark Tank can't or guests that ever been on, right? Well, we were one of the most watched episodes in the history of the show. Uh, we That's had Kevin incredible. Hart on our episode. <laughs> yes. So I can't take all the credit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, to get these people. So who actually invested in you? Mark Cuban and Kevin Hart. They uh, partnered up together. That's incredible, bro. Yes, yes. Thank yeah. you. For you to get them to invest in your idea, that pitch had to be amazing. Well, you know, it was funny. Uh, my TikTok uh, team was like, man, everyone's saying this is like the best, one of the best pitches. Like, they have like a, a viral video going around with like the top 10 best pitches on Shark Tank. And on almost all those lists were like in top two. <laughs> really? And I'm like, whoa, man, I had no idea. When those double doors opened, I just I just went for it. You know, I didn't want to drop the ball, let the community, the CMOS community down. Mm -hmm. You know, my I already had a successful business. So I'm like, don't go on this show and embarrass yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and then have terrible PR when it airs. So, you know, those double doors open, I just blacked out. It was like fourth quarter Kobe. Just, yeah. just got to go for it. <laughs> I'm going to jump ahead real quick. Then I'm going to jump right back to where we are right now. But um, how much did they invest in you? Uh, 600000 600000 yes. for what percent on uh, the show? 10% each. 10% each. So 20%, yes. 600000 mm -hmm. But I would imagine that the money is the... The smallest part of the investment. Oh, absolutely. I, I devalued my company just to work with them. Because originally I wanted uh, to sell 5% for 500000 mm -hmm. which would have put me at about Dang. $10 million evaluation. And, you know, they were like, I'm not getting out of bed for 5%. <laughs> so <laughs> they, uh, they, saw, they saw the numbers. They loved it. They thought it was a great product, a great story. And, you know, they wanted a bigger percentage so they can get more involved. But uh, like I even told them on the show, I think the biggest blessing is being able to work with you guys. That's invaluable. Mm. I mean, just a consultation with Mark Cuban is probably more, <laughs> more than that, you know? So you value your company then at $10 million. Yes. What gives you the audacity to company, value your company at $10 million? Well, we did $4 million our first 10 months in business. And, oh. and I knew it was like, man, we're, 
we don't even have a TikTok yet, <laughs> you know? We, don't have, we haven't launched our new products, I, I, ideas yet. We were still in a 2,000 square foot uh, uh, kitchen, uh, mm -hmm. you know? And it was low-hanging fruit. It's like, man, we have more demand than we could even meet. Imagine once we can build a space big enough to meet the demand, like we're scratching the surface. And, and I, I was so right. Um, 2023, we did six, 16 million. And that went in just, just just last year, so you know I kind of I kind of saw it, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So you uh, so actually you like undervalue your company. I did. I just I just really wanted to work with Mark, especially he was the shark I had my eyes on before I even got on the show. Yeah. You know, if you watch the show, like he's the, he's the one that that speaks my language a lot. Yeah. You know, and uh, but he never really invests in like supplements or yeah. food anything. So people were telling me like, hey, don't be disappointed if he doesn't because he just always goes for tech stuff. And I'm like, man, OK. Uh, so I went on there and originally he said, you know, I'm going to pass on this. Mm -hmm. And then to after, towards the middle of the pitch and uh, the negotiations, he kind of nudged uh, Kevin and was like, you want to do this together? <laughs> and, and, he, and he circled back. <laughs> So, okay, so you originally valued your company at $10 million, but then they gave you 600000 for 20%, yeah. which equates to, what, $3 million. Yeah. Which we had already did in sales, so you, you know. Sales, right? <laughs> right, right. But the relationships are everything. Correct. Okay, good, good. In 2023, you said you did how much? Sixteen million. Sixteen million. Yeah. Not counting your pockets or not. Yeah. Just, it's a business podcast. So I need to know the business. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. On CMOS, what is your um, profit margin? Uh, right now, profits last year was lower because we we just built a twenty thousand square foot uh, warehouse that we're opening uh, February first actually, mm. and so I invested about one, one and a half million into into building that that factory and and coming up with new SKUs like our our gummies uh, which which hasn't even launched yet, uh, but to answer your question, our profit margins are about north of thirty five percent. That's pretty good though. Yeah, it's pretty good numbers, and it's it's gonna get better. But you know we're in that third year now yeah. where. It's, it's, the, it's the growing pains and the bleed out here where you're investing and negotiating deals with bigger influencers and, you know, making revenue split deals. And, you know, it, it, it mm. gets it gets bigger, but it's going to it's going to triple our revenue once everything's in place. Yeah. So. All right. So uh, I'm an influencer. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Not, okay. not, I, mean, yeah, I would I'm say not so. Like be yeah. Simone or like Pinky or something like that. But I got a little influence. Yeah, I agree. A company like you, when it comes to working with someone who may have a platform or have some sort of influence, what are those conversations like? Well, depending on how big they are. So there was one comedian that we really wanted back in the day, uh, Monique, because uh, she, she would eat sea moss like in her videos all the time. And I'm like, man, she doesn't even know we have the best sea moss on the planet. I wish I could just get, get, get some to her, you know. So I, I remember reaching out to her and uh, her, her manager, her husband reached out to us. And that conversation, you know, that was a few years ago when we were still new. And it was like, OK, this is these are the numbers for somebody this big. You know, we couldn't we couldn't afford it uh, yet, but uh, they were willing to do it if we were willing to give up equity. But I wasn't willing to do that yet right. because I'm like, man, we're scratching the surface. You know, I want to hold on to as much as I can. Um, and then we, we have talked to B. Simone, who's also very, very interested. And then she will give us her numbers and it'll, it'll be a lot different from, you know, someone like Monique. You know, everybody is, has is their she numbers. higher or lower than our Monique. Monique was a lot more. A lot more. A lot you. more, okay. yeah. Seven figures. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Well, who do you think would have more influence? I think, yo, first off, yeah. B. Simone, I went to a show with B. Simone. And uh, that's when she was doing her podcast with her and her, her co host, Megan. Yeah. And there's a lot of young people there. But, you know, we were like waiting for them to come out. And it was like kind of playing videos on the street. When they actually came out, they came out like in, like they, they came out like behind us, like just in the crowd, and the room shook. <laughs> nice. I, you would have thought the Beyonce herself <laughs> just walked in the building, <laughs> wow, and I'm like, yo, powerful. this is incredible. So yeah, man, give her the break. Hey, we gonna call B Simone back today, man. <laughs> hey, B, don't forget me though. You know what I mean? Don't, we a package deal, okay? We gonna split it ninety ten. All right, we'll go, we come together, yeah, okay? Yeah. Now, nah, but yeah, like literally, yeah. the room 
shook. Yeah, no I lie. Believe it. I was I was sitting there looking at my wife like, yo, I maybe I've taken our, our relationship for granted because I'm cool with B. And I'm like, yo, what's up, B? Do I need to call her like Miss Simone or like am I missing something? <laughs> it was incredible. So yes. yeah, nah, but yeah, so yeah. let me ask you, who who's had the most influence? Um, Amber, Amber Wagner. So I don't know if you, if you follow her on Instagram, but she's the girl with the really long nails and she talks with her hands a lot. Mm. Sometimes you will just see her hands in the shot and she'll, she'll talk inspirational quotes like, get your life together. You can do it. Oh, and all you see is her, her nails, you know? And she was the first influencer that took a chance on us. She gave us, she charged us a, a, a really low amount. It was our first year in business. Well, and well, uh, uh, everything was like six hundred dollars for for a really? video that we could run ads on and everything. She blessed us for sure. She ain't and no more is she. Uh, well, you know, we we just naturally pay her more when we work, with, just yeah. out of homage and, and out of respect for what she did for the brand. Mm -hmm. But she made a video that got over ten million views on it, and uh, we we did over seven figures in sales uh, just from that that one video. And mm, um, it allowed it allowed us to to really take off and blast our uh, ad campaigns, uh, you know. So sh so far, she's she's been the biggest influence. Uh, we also worked with Evander Holyfield. Mm. Um, I didn't but, work, did it? I mean, it did. It did work. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's like a vendor, but yeah, we got we got like a million plus views on, on that video, oh. and you know, he looks great for his age. You know, he's still a strong guy, and you know, I think the demographic he hits is two one. Uh, male, you know, uh, 80% of our customers, I want to say about 77% of our customers are women. So, you know, most of the guys that take our product, they get introduced to it through their women, you know, so I just felt like mm -hmm. someone brolic right. like him and heavyweight, you know, uh, taking the product will inspire guys to do the same thing. So I felt like it, it had its purpose. But, you know, uh, Amber's video just went crazy. You know, she... Evander Holyfield's joint, did it sell a lot? Well, we did we did make sales. It, it wasn't it wasn't crazy like with with, with with Amber, you know. No, no disrespect to my man, holy field, yeah. but you know what I mean? Like Yeah. <laughs> we also didn't get to run the campaign that long because it was right after our Black Friday sale yeah. uh in twenty twenty two. We uh we sold a hundred thousand jars in forty eight hours. Mm. We had no idea that was gonna happen. Oh wow. And it backed us up for about four months. And so people were starting to message Evander Holyfield and his team like, hey, where's my CMOS? Oh, and, you know, his yeah, uh, PR yeah, yeah, team yeah. reached out to me and said, hey, we completely understand what's going on, but we're in the middle of a rebranding. And uh, we just think that, you know, once you catch up, let's revisit. Gotcha. And, and, and we, we had to pull the campaign. So to be fair, we, we weren't able to run it longer than maybe two and a half, three weeks. Got but it. Okay. First, yeah, I guess he got some influence. I mean, he still yeah. is the champ. You know what I mean? So. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Uh, who didn't work though? Who didn't work? That you thought was gonna work? Like, yo, this should be popping. I'll be honest with you, we haven't got into influencer marketing that heavy yet to even say. Everyone we've worked with has, has brought in uh, sales. Uh, I'll tell you one surprise. Hey, was, I hate to be the first person that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Everybody worked, but we tried a little social proof thing. Nobody bought that CBOS. Yeah, I would hate that. No, no, we haven't had any any loss uh, so far, but we've only worked with. Evander and, and Amber. Mm -hmm. And then Sky Jackson is a, just a, a, a natural fan of ours. Mm -hmm. So she gave us a shout out on TikTok on her own without oh, nice. us even asking. And, you know, that, that spiked a lot of traffic too. Uh, but we haven't really, the reason why we haven't dived in is because we've always sold more than we could handle in a sense. Mm -hmm. We've always been in higher demand on our own accord. It. So it's like, man, what are we going to do if, if we... If Kevin Hart shouts us out, or uh, or Monique, or any or mm. B Simone, or any of these people, but now we're moving into this factory in, in the next thirty days, nice. and we're going to be able to triple our team size, our how many orders we can ship out, everything, and at that point, I think we're going to start grabbing, grabbing, grabbing big names, kind of like a Fashion Nova, CMOS, you know, uh, yeah, <laughs> just yeah, I like that. having I like everybody. That. Can I be on the list though? Yeah, absolutely. Yo, absolutely. can you make sure <laughs> Whitley Agency? He's in the building. Can you make sure I'm on the list? Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> That's exciting. All right, so I, I do got to be honest, though. I don't even know. I should, I, this is going to blow my deal. <laughs> I actually strongly dislike CBOSS. Really? Oh, my gosh. I had it a couple times, and... It just, that's why when I saw you had the gummies, I'm like, all right, yes. I can kind of stomach it. But, and listen, for the ad, I'll eat it with a smile. I'm really good at that stuff. 
<laughs> but it's like it's like too gritty. I had a couple mm. times the kid, and it's not. It's all different. Like whoever you get it from, it's yeah. all different. The consistency. I don't know. I just it's like, like mac and cheese. You know, it's like. That's a fact. 20 people can make it and, you know, and you only like one of them. Yeah. You know, uh, see, when I made CMOS, I, I, I came up with my company during the pandemic and it was my little sister, my grandmother, myself and my mom. We were all on shutdown together and they're really picky eaters, my little sister especially. So I'm like, I have to come up with a way to make it tasty for, for everybody to, to try it. So this is when I came up with the flavors. It's almost impossible to make it tasty. Oh, it's delicious. You don't think like delicious? It's absolutely right, delicious. I, like, I, 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 I want you to try it. I'm thinking probably, <laughs> all right, all right. So which one? Strawberry banana. Strawberry banana, that's yes. the most popular? Right. Well, a pineapple and strawberry banana. Which one take? That's my I'm, personal favorite. We got one chance, bro. What's, all right. <laughs> if I have one. one? All right. Uh, do you like strawberry and bananas together in like I a smoothie? Strawberry banana, okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah. Do you like yogurt? I love yogurt. I okay. love yogurt, actually. Okay, this is the choice. This is the one. All right. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking is it'd be you know bearable and literally, ladies and gentlemen, I've never actually tried this at all. Yeah, I'm gonna be uh, extremely honest, kind of, because I still want my deal. <laughs> let me pray first. So. <laughs> okay, all right. Let me see. Um, There's a lot of things you can do with five hundred dollars. I mean, you can have a night out with your significant other. You could buy some really expensive shoes while. Really nice shoes are about double $500. Um, you could buy a course where you can learn something for $500. But I have something better for you to do with the $500. I want to meet with you every single morning for the rest of your life. Well, maybe not the rest of your life, but every morning, Monday through Friday, for the rest of the year. I have information and game that have allowed me to build a successful business, a successful community, and a successful life all the way around. But I wanna share that with you. But the only way we can accomplish this is not me selling you a course, not me giving you a one-on-one -on -one consultation, because even with that, you'll get the information, but you'll need more. I wanna meet with you every single morning. Now, would I meet with someone every morning for 500 bucks for a year? And the answer is yes. Actually, we've been doing this thing since 2017. We have what's called the morning meetup. Every single month we have a theme, whether it's social media, whether it's motivation, whether it's strategy, whatever it is, we have a theme for the month and every morning in that month, we have a conversation around that topic. And I am giving a wealth of knowledge, not only myself, but a lot of friends, a lot of people that you see on this podcast, they join every single week. So you need a community of people that you can grow with and you need a coach. I'm your coach. The Morning Meetup is your community. Go to themorningmeetup.com. It's $499 and I will meet you every single morning for an entire year. Give it a shot. Oh, that's a big, that's a big bite right there. <laughs> Let's see what's going on first. <laughs> Hold on, let, me, let me just make sure <laughs> It tastes like yogurt Yeah How you get it to do this? Because of the banana The banana changes the consistency in that To giving it like a custardy kind of a, a base The starch Yo, every sea moss I had Was either like thick and chewy or Gritty yeah. Or super gritty yeah. And that's not like Yeah, I can't Yo, this yeah. really tastes like yogurt and you you eating it like yogurt. <laughs> Hold on, how much am I supposed to eat, bro? Uh, two tablespoons, but I mean, I always tell people, you know, to take 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 it as needed. How much did know? I have so far? I think maybe about a tablespoon. You probably had one no, tablespoon. No, I still got another tablespoon left. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yo, this is good, yo. No lie. <laughs> If it wasn't good, I'd take a piece like, mmm, this uh, is delicious. <laughs> no, this is good. Yeah. What's the, what's, nah, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. What's the drawback of eating too much? Well, uh, if you have uh, iodine sensitivity, CMOS mm -hmm. has, is very rich in iodine. So we will tell people if you're taking like iodine supplements for thyroids, you may be getting too much of a good thing. So, you know, always consult with your doctor when you're taking any vitamins or minerals, you know, uh, but, but that, that's about it. Some people have an iron, uh, iodine uh, sensitivity. Yo, this joint is amazing. Hold on, bro. So on the <laughs> on the thing it says, sea moss uses uses mm -hmm. to use as a face mask. Yeah. Spread evenly to face for fifteen minutes, and then rinse with warm water. This yes, 
Uh, we literally have people sending us like strawberry face mask pictures nah, and stuff. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, Use as hair and beard mask. Yep. Add to smoothies and pancake batter for extra fluffiness. What is going on here? Yeah. <laughs> Add to teas, coffee, smoothie, oatmeal for fast, an easy way to get your 92 minerals. Use as a thickening agent when cooking soups and sauces. What is going on here? Yeah. So, like, what some parents do, too, <laughs> is uh, they'll replace the jam. Yo, uh, no lie. Here. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Try the pineapple. But Kate this kept a, asking me about this. That's another hit. Yo, you like pineapple? Yeah. Nah, this is crazy. <laughs> uh, somebody in the morning meet up ask, um, what's the shelf life? Okay, uh, great question. So it's, it lasts for three weeks in the refrigerator. We use real fruit. So just how uh, strawberries will go bad after a few weeks in the fridge. Uh, we, it's no preservatives. Five ingredients. A five-year-old can pronounce them. Uh, and it's good for a year in the freezer. So what people do like on Black Friday, someone bought 90 32-ounce jars, our big jars, 90 of them. And what they probably doing is freezing them and, and having a year supply for they're them re, and the family. They're reselling them, bro. Trust me. <laughs> or that. <laughs> not, or that. Yo, that yeah. is. Yo, I, I almost can't believe how good it is, bro. Like, thank you, thank it, cause I, and the people that's listening, they might be like, "Oh, well, he's still trying to get his deal." But no, I, I really love it. Like, yeah. I. Re, this is. Well, Man. our claim to fame was our formula. I started on Etsy, on a, a, you know, a small farmers, like a, almost like a farmer's table website, you know, and uh, people started leaving reviews like, how do you get it so smooth? How do you get it to taste so good? How, why doesn't it smell like the ocean? And, you it know, the ocean is so yeah. fishy. I had one one time mm -hmm. and it's like from somebody that's like super woke <laughs> too. So it had to be real. It's yeah. like real sea moss. Yes. Yes. I was like, mm, this really smell too woke. You know, people. Cool. We've actually had people say that, like some some of those the small uh, percentage of people will say it's not supposed to taste that good. Or, you know, like why are you mixing it with fruit and stuff like this? And the thing is, the reason why our base is so good is because of our process. Like we get we get our sea moss from the cleanest waters in the world, and we process we clean it thoroughly. Even the water we clean it with, it's it's better than bottled water. We had a company come and build tanks in our facility that filters the water like seven times before it even oh, wow. before it even touches the the dry sea moss so this is uh this is sea moss in its raw dry condition oh uh i'll take All right, it so i probably the won't be able to get jiggy with that i'm not gonna oh, lie no, to no, you no 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 the yogurt thing i'm good with bro so um, so you can smell it that's the ocean you can literally smell the ocean and if you look on it you'll see uh pieces yeah, of, just, of just, some yeah that's the ocean that's yeah Oh, yeah. that's the one. Yeah. The, yeah. So this is what we use. So this this sea moss that you have in your hand is from St. Lucia. Uh, St. Lucia, I think, has some of the prettiest sea moss. <laughs> you know, nice uh, very. What's little, little white stuff on there? Uh, it's all, so that's uh, what you're seeing on there is little debris from the ocean. Sometimes it's seashells, uh, natural salt from the ocean that dries uh, on it. And you what know. people eat? Th they just eat this? No, no, no. You clean this first. So uh, we sell it raw. And then what you will do is you would soak this in water. Some people like to soak it in limes and lemons to help mm -hmm. kill the smell. Um, the acid from the lemons helps to, to helps the water to penetrate it, to rehydrate it quicker too. Like this bag will swell like this much sea moss. Oh, wow. Like you can make a lot of sea moss with this. So you'll soak it first, thoroughly clean it, pour that water off, put fresh water, clean it again. Keep doing that until like the water is crystal clear and you got rid of everything. Now you have a really, really uh, clean and beautiful base. You got rid of the fish smell, you got rid of all the debris from the ocean and you wanna see debris. That's how you know it's not pool grown, yeah. it's not lab grown or anything like that, it's from the actual ocean. So, you know, our fans love to, love to see that stuff on it because they know it's the real deal. Gotcha. And then they clean it thoroughly and once they have a clean base, now you can make it into a gel, you can add it to, some people even cut it up and put it, pieces of it in their salads. You know, on mm. the island where I'm from in the Bahamas, that's what we will do. Sometimes like, like if you make a vegan conch salad, yeah. they'll use uh, sea moss because it still has like that, you know, that ocean taste and uh, you still that, feel uh, like you're eating seafood. So that's a lot of ways. Okay. Um, stuff is good, bro. How do you what feel about it? <laughs> what you think? It's good, yeah. right? Yeah, she, I, she was another one that did, wasn't a fan. So yeah. I was nervous. <laughs> she kept asking me about it. She was like, hey, where that man sent us that sea moss? I think she thought I stole it. Like, I want to get up by that. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So I want to get into, like, the business of it. But what, what I know it seemed like the last couple of years, sea moss has been, like, a thing. Yes. 
it's a, I would imagine it's good for you, but how good? Why is it so popular? Well, a CMOS has actually been around for almost 400 years. Uh, back in the 1800s, Irish people uh, used it during the potato famine uh, to survive. And that's why, you know, even to this day in Jamaica, they call it Irish moss. And they have a drink called Irish moss. Mm. It's because it has a, a very long history dating all the way back to Ireland. Uh, so it's been, it's been uh, around for hundreds of years. And the reason why it's so good for you is because it's mineral packed. Sea moss has 65 plus minerals uh, in it that the human body thrives from. So it's literally giving your body, you know, we live in a culture now where our food is nutrient dead. Like even if you're buying food, fruits uh organically and stuff like that you know the, the the best time to eat a fruit is right after you pick it off a tree that's when it's most nutrient dense right. um so a lot of the foods we eat fast foods DoorDash, you know stuff like that is so overly processed that we're not truly getting the minerals or the vitamins that that we need so sea moss literally is gives you what your body needs. And you take two tablespoons and you know you covered covered ground. You know, if I feel like I'm getting sick, the flu or anything like that, I'll, I'll take more, I'll take it as needed throughout the day and I'll notice that my symptoms will go away, usually for me within 48 hours. Wow. You know, so I, I actually wasn't even trying to make this a, 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 co a company. I was making CMOS at home just to keep us safe from the pandemic. And I used to make CMOS lattes in the morning for my grandmother because mm. she loves coffee. So I would take the raw CMOS gel and I'll put it in the milk and I'll froth it up and I'll make the milk like really rich and thick. And then I'll give I'll, I'll put it in a cute little cup and I'll film it and I'll give it to my grandma. And then I'll post it on Instagram. And then my DM started getting filled with nurses it's like hey i'm in a covid wing i'm around this stuff every day and i have to go home to my husband my, my baby like can i please get yeah. some i'll pay you for it and i'm like there's no way i'm charging you You guys like we're on lockdown and you're on the on, on the front lines you know mm -hmm. so i gave them my address and i put it in a cooler for the local nurses and they'll just come and pick it up we had a hashtag call uh cmos a uh, free cmos for you nurses give people your address to come to your house i mean yeah i mean <laughs> you were an Alexia. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I, I would never do that today, yeah. you know. <laughs> right, right. But back then, you know, it was friends of friends of friends, nurse practitioners, stuff like that. Oh, like, hey, just come over and grab a jar. And then they started talking about it to their nurse friends, and then people in other states wanted it. Uh, and I'm like, if, as long as you could show me a picture that you work at the hospital, I'll ship it to you for free, too. Hold on, what was you doing at this point where you can just fund this uh, philanthropic effort? This is the crazy part. I had maybe a thousand dollars in my bank account at the time, and uh, all our businesses were frozen. Jobs, every everybody was out of work. Just like forty eight million other Americans at the time, and um, and to your point, after like two weeks of doing that, and more and more requests started coming in, mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm going broke. I need to start charging, <laughs> right. you know. And uh, people wanted it that weren't nurses, so I would charge them and keep it free for for the healthcare workers. Nice. And I started an Etsy page just to help me process the orders. <laughs> I got. I'm sorry. I just keep yeah. talking. I'm gonna hit these gummies. Yeah, yeah. Hi, hold on. Let me try one first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, how many can I eat? My bad. Two of those is three thousand milligrams. It's it's packed. It's packed. So put, so put some back. No, no, you're good. I'm just letting you know. Yeah, like, I was about to go skittle. Hey. Like, <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, Four yeah. should be all right, right? I mean, you you should be fine. You should always consult with a doctor, though. You know, uh, make sure you're not getting too much of a good thing. All right, I, just, you know, I gotta I cover. I gotta cover myself in case somebody eats a whole jar and blame me for it. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, yeah. But uh, but but literally, we were just giving it away for free. I created an Etsy page because people would DM me from on seven different platforms, and it was it's hard to keep track of all the orders. So I created a page on Etsy and I, I, I sent it to everyone that ordered from me before. And I said, hey, you can order online now. And I said, thank you for patronizing my business. I made a special coupon code for you, 50% off uh, for your next order for our, our, our website launch. And I customized every coupon code. So like if it was David, your code was King David. Mm -hmm. Your name was Jasmine, it was Queen Jasmine. Yeah. So they knew it wasn't like a generic code that I'm just sending an email blast or a text blast. And uh, I said, hey, uh, if you can leave me an honest, honest review, 
Uh, it'll help me gain, uh, get inside the algorithms and kind of bump my store up. Uh, within the first week of, uh, but in the, by the second week of launching on Etsy, we were the best sellers on the whole site for Seamless. Wow. And the, because what happened was we had over a hundred plus orders and we had gotten like 75 star reviews. So the way Amazon, Etsy, and a lot of these search engines work, they take the sales and the reviews and they say, oh, this store is on fire. Let's highlight it, let's, let's bump it up. So I went from being on like page 50 <laughs> to page one, wow. you know, within two weeks. And then that attracted another CMOS company uh, here in Atlanta that they don't make their own CMOS gel, they, but they're good at marketing. Mm -hmm. And they were like, man, we've tried your CMOS. We like, you know, they bought it secretly, tried it. And they were like, this is the best CMOS we've it's ever had. incredible, bro. Even the gummy, <laughs> I want another one so bad. <laughs> yes. So uh, we, we started working with them, uh, white private labeling their brand, where we would put their label on, on, on our recipe. And they were sending us like sometimes 3,000 orders in one month. Wow. Yeah. And I remember uh, showing my mom, um, a check once and I'm like we just got $20,000 for one week of work <laughs> you know and Incredible. at the time my mom was in the process of like losing her home and you know we're on shutdown we don't know what's going on in the world we don't know where the next dollar is going to come from and and then literally boom something that I just started at home to keep everybody safe and giving away for free turned into uh, we made our first million in seven months uh, of, wow. of starting the business and we didn't even have a brand yet we didn't have the transformation factory it was just a, a empty it was a plain jar mason jar we, we go to target and buy I, I put a sticker on it that said vegan and then my grandmother would tie these cute little uh uh tags on them that said made with love oh wow <laughs> yeah and then uh, and that was it we didn't even have a brand yet but once we once i saw that this was really becoming a thing it wasn't a f uh, a f uh you know like a fluke or anything like that i'm like i'm ready to put branding on this and and, and be proud of this and and take it further incredible bro <laughs> this uh, i i I knew CMOS was good for you. I just didn't know like how good it was or you know what it's supposed to do. But once I started trying it, I was like, well, this stuff's terrible. I don't wanna, I'm cool. I'll just drink water, you know what I mean? Yeah. But this, I can see myself really getting, yeah. uh, getting what I'm looking for out of it, right? Yeah. So I wanna go to this, this pitch though. Okay. And how you found yourself on Shark Tank. Okay. So seven months in, you made your first million, or was it 10 months? Seven, seven, seven months, months in, you yeah. make your first million. Yeah. How long after that did you go on Shark Tank? Three months later. Three months later. Yeah, three months later. Uh, at that time, we started running ad campaigns, and we worked with Amber, and we exploded, and we made, we made another two mil within like 60 days after our first mil. Did Amber feel like she owned you? No. She's been absolutely a sweetheart, you know? Really? I've, I've heard nightmares, and you know, being a startup with no legal, no nothing at the time, I was customer service, I was the marketer, I was the photographer, I was everything yeah. at the time. And you know, we had her sign like a really basic form just saying we had permission to use it. And to this day, we we're in communication, like, yeah. Uh, she really she really blessed our company and we always send her uh you know give her her flowers we've even sent her randomly like flowers to her house sometimes mm -hmm. or like hey go get your nails done here's yeah. 500 bucks you know when we've did you done stop stuff working like with her though we ha we haven't stopped per se like uh, we, we're launching our gummies next week so you actually just tried it before the whole world uh, tried it you know so we're, we're going to work with her this year and we, we plan on, i plan on making her like an official ambassador whereas like you know you know like on a monthly salary and you just keep giving us content i, th I think she's she's she deserves that more than deserves oh, that sure. you know so how did you find her though <clears throat> i was a fan i was i was a fan she was really funny she's one of those co uh, comedi comedians uh, on instagram yeah. and she would post inspirational stuff and really funny stuff yeah. and i would see her promote other products and i'm like man she's like Billy Mays, like she can convince you to buy anything. She would be a like one of those infomercial like superstars if she was ever in that. And I'm like, she can sell, you know, ice to someone in Alaska. Like she mm. can get it done. And I always said like one day I'm gonna have a product. I'm definitely gonna reach out to her. Nice. And uh, when, once I created my marketing team. And they said, okay, we need creative so we can run ads. Um, you know, is there anybody you know that you want to work with? She was immediately at the top of my list. And I reached out to her. She gave us a great rate. And none of us expected 
uh, the video to go that viral, yeah. you know, uh, what she did actually, uh, she had the strawberry banana. So that, that flavor went crazy. That was our number one seller back mm-hmm. then. And she like tapped on the jar with this spoon and she's like, Hey, your girl told me you can't get it up. This could help. <laughs> 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 it was hilarious. And she was like, everybody want to know how I'm this big girl and I could still do the splits. See <laughs> you oh, know, wow. it was hilarious. Hold on. Does that help you? Oh yeah, it's a libido. Situation? Yeah, it's a it's it's a libido Reese. enhancer. <laughs> Reese, it's, come on, man. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Once guys take CMOS, they never yeah, want to stop. Like, I remember one time I dropped off. Uh, I was about to eat some more, but then uh, I people were looking at me like, "Oh, Dave can't get it out." He was, yeah. You know, I want to take a little bit though. You know what I mean? Just so I can put the top off. Yeah. <laughs> Well, funny story, um, I, I had taken Golly. a whole box of this stuff to my barbershop one day, gave it to all, all, all the barbers, mm-hmm. came back in uh, a week and a half later, and every every guy wants to brag about their Johnson and how well it's working now. And I'm like, you guys are so <laughs> are pro- serious? So serious. I had one guy that's like, man, all my wife had to do was touch me, <laughs> you know? And then like the whole barbershop is raving about like the uh, like the libido uh, benefits that they're feeling. No so, way. But CMOS is very rich in zinc and zinc mm-hmm. builds testosterone. So like by, by taking your CMOS, you're boosting your libido, your sperm count, sperm mobility, mm-hmm. uh, fertility. Uh, overall, we've, we've actually had people who couldn't conceive write us and say, oh my gosh, I, I'm pregnant. And I know it's because of the CMOS. Unbelievable. And we've also had people that weren't happy about that. They're like, I'm on birth control. <laughs> Why am I pregnant? Right, right. And I'm like, oh, it's not our fault. <laughs> you know? But yeah, it's super rich for fertility. Wow. Yeah. And it's really good for men. Great for your skin. Uh, people, uh, you know, compliment my skin all the time. And I'm just, they're like, what are you using? I'm like, I, I just eat CMOS. Uh, and I, I put a mask on sometimes. I put it in my beard. It makes it fuller. It, it helps it to grow. Bro, if you telling me this yeah. joint will help me, my beard connect, oh, yeah. I work for you. Oh, yeah. Okay. I work for you. I'm now, telling you. Congratulations. Start putting you it in your, in your system because, I mean, testosterone controls your hair growth, you know, so oh. your facial growth. So, uh, yeah. I've had people tell me like my beard connects now or it's it's grown in uh, fuller. It's not as thin, you know? I'm not going to say I 100% believe this. Alexa, <laughs> this, this sounds amazing. But then it would make sense why there's such a CMOS craze now. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm going to look into it. Yes, yes. I'm going to keep eating the CMOS stuff. Yeah. Actually, I'll let you know later today. Yeah. Think, think about it, you know. <laughs> I'm going home after this. Like, yeah. Hey. <laughs> But, you know, if it didn't work, CMOS wouldn't be as popular as it is. Yeah. I mean, think about it. There's so many CMOS companies now. Our return customer rate is like 46%. You know, if it, oh, was, wow. if it was something that just tastes good and people didn't feel something different, like, they wouldn't keep coming back. It's not cheap, you know? So they wouldn't keep coming back. So, you know, everyone that's tried CMOS has bragged about it. You know, it's a very small, minute amount of people that say, I, I didn't feel anything. Is maybe they didn't uh, stick with it long enough, or their lifestyle is canceling out the the benefits, you know. Mm. So, but for the most part, I mean, even someone with a standard American diet feels the benefits. All right, how much is this for? I fall in love with it. How All much? right, uh, so <laughs> I, I was s- like, yo, in my mind while you're talking, <clears throat> yeah, I'm, like, I'm at the stock the shelves. But yeah. then you said it wasn't cheap. But I'm like, all right, let me. Uh, well, uh, how much is this? this is our smallest jar. The, these range anywhere from twenty to thirty dollars, depending on the flavor. Okay. And then we, our biggest price break is the thirty-two ounce jar. That's a, a one month supply, mm-hmm. and those range about forty-six to fifty dollars. Oh, that means yeah. That means. Expensive, and then we just did a fifty percent off Black Friday sale. So if people were able to to get the biggest jar for literally like twenty two dollars, twenty three dollars. Oh, no, I'm gonna get that today, actually. Yeah. Well, I mean, we don't have to, but I'm still gonna get it. Forty dollars is not bad. Though. And then this, we always tell people like the raw sea moss. It's more work because you have to actually like make it yourself. Mm-hmm. But this bag is like uh, thirteen, fourteen dollars, and this can make you about three months supply of CMOS. Oh, wow. Okay. You know, so we tell people, like, you know, if you can't afford the jar, I have a video teaching you how to make the gel, literally yeah. our recipe, our formula, um, and you can just buy it and make it yourself and save the most money. And then you can add whatever fruits you want. Maybe we don't have a fruit flavor that you want, like papaya or mixed berry. You can throw in your own fruits and make your own flavor by, by making it yourself. So we try to hit every angle. Gotcha. You know? But uh, I guess if I made this at, at the house by myself, it'd be gritty. 
Well, uh, a, t- a tip I'll give people at home, you, you want to use a high speed blender. Mm-hmm. You know, it's hard to it's hard to do that at a commercial level because, you know, high speed blenders are, are, are normally smaller, like Vitamixes. Mm-hmm. Commercial, you know, you have 200 gallon mixers and stuff. Yeah. It just can't spin that fast. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you want to get like a Ninja, a Vitamix, something that has like an RPM of 20,000 plus and, and let it run. Got Let it, it okay. run and it'll break up all those chunks and and stuff like that too. Got it. Okay. All right. So seven months in, you, you like you you make your first million dollars. Yes. So you're popping. Three months later, you find yourself on Shark Tank. Yes. How did that happen? Okay. So fun, a funny story. I had a casting director that was a fan of the product, and uh, she was following me. I, I had no idea. Uh, her, na- uh, her name was Holland. Shout out to Holland. And she was like, "Man, have you thought about Shark Tank? Every time I open Instagram, I see you doing more and more and more and more numbers." And I'm like, no way am I good enough for Shark Tank. You know, that's like that's like my dream show. It's like the only thing I watch on TV. And uh, so I didn't I didn't think uh, that we had the numbers. And then I was like, I would love to be on that show. So she was like, hey, they're going to be opening up casting in a couple months. Uh, send send an interest uh, email to this email. Uh, and it was before the casting had officially opened. It was like maybe two months before. She was giving me a, a heads up. So I emailed the email that she told me to email, and no one ever responded. And um, so two months later, the official casting link opened up. And I said, you know what, let me just apply like a regular person, you know, without trying to, you know, go through the back door. And um, I had uh, I had someone call me like maybe four days later because, you know, when you fill out the application, you put your sales, you put your backstory and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, I didn't realize until I went back and binge watched the show to prepare for the show that our numbers were crazy compared to like most startups. Wow. I'm thinking like we're not doing enough for the show. And I'll hear someone pitch that's been in business for three years and they'll say, you know, which, how much have you made? Oh, 300,000. And the Sharks will be like, oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. And I'm like, 300,000 in three years is good? Oh, they're going <laughs> to love a million in seven months then, sure. <laughs> you know? So they called us within days, um, got the whole story. And they were like, okay, <laughs> we're going to move you uh, two rounds ahead. They, they skipped me. I guess they do round one, round two, round three. They're like, we're going to put you in the final round. Uh, you haven't made the show, but you're in the last stages. Good. And they did that within four days. Damn. And they called me uh, two weeks later. And I, I, I'm in, I'm in my, my warehouse with, with, my, with my team. You know, 10 blenders going off at the same time, box tapes, all this noise. And I see a California number pop up on my phone. And uh, I have this habit of answering every call that comes through because you just never know if it's business, of opportunity really? or of a solicitation, you know. So I answer every so call. my mindset. <laughs> well, you know, I don't really, know. It. I'm just. I'm, I'm glad I did that because I was Shark Tank calling, yeah. you know, and um, I answer the phone. They say, hey, Mr. Gibson, uh, we're just calling to give you some great news. And I, I was like, wait, 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 stop, stop. I was like, I got to I got to put you on speaker so my whole team could hear. I knew what they were about to say. Mm. So I had everyone I'm like, shut off the blenders. Everybody come in the middle of the floor. And I put the phone down, put it on speaker. And um, I'm like, oh, I was like, go ahead, sir. Can you repeat what you just said? And he was like, hey, I just wanted to congratulate you. You guys made the show. So no one knew I had applied to Shark Tank that, that works for me, except for my uh, COO. <coughs> and so I'm like, what show is it? Uh, you know? And they were like, oh, Shark Tank. And everybody loses it. Wow. The whole staff goes crazy. They're cheering. They're like, they're giving uh, high fives and hugs. <laughs> and... Um, after that, it was grind time. Yeah. It was, uh, they, they paired me with two producers. Uh, one, her name was uh, Diane. She's actually uh, cousins with uh, Zeus Network owner, <coughs> uh, uh, Lumel. Okay. And uh, she was my, my personal producer for my episode. And she was amazing. She, uh, she told me, you know, make sure you know your numbers, know, know everything about your product inside and out. And, and it was easy for me because I, I'm the guy driving to Walmart, buying the jars, mm-hmm. going to Office Depot, buying the packing peanuts. Like I knew the price of every single thing. I knew my cost of goods, like the back of my hand. So she, she was just like, you're in, you're in a good place. So we just started practicing the pitch for like two months. Hold on, you practice it with her? Well, 
you practice alone too, but then there's times where they'll you're on a Zoom call and it's like, okay, go, <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. So it's not like yeah. you're just on your own. You show up and this is what you got. They actually prep you. Oh yeah, so absolutely. Okay, I got you. Absolutely. They make sure you know you don't go on, on there and not have good content or a good episode. Yeah. Their their job is, as producers is it's almost like you're their baby, and like once you air or once you pitch, it, it, it's like oh we produced that episode. Got oh we it. produced that pitch. You know, Got so it. they don't want to look bad either. Yeah. You know, so you know we we would practice clean up some of the lines added some little funny jokes in there practice 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 and then right before we get on the show you have to give your pitch to like every producer stage set person like on a zoom call with like a hundred plus people before the show before you so even there's take, like a prep process oh it is okay, definitely gotcha. a big process and then then it's the set you know, you, you, how do you want your set to look? Um, getting the props shipped to the studio. You know, uh, Shark Tank's team does a great job of putting it all together and building the set, but we're hands down responsible for what's on the set. Got so it. I wanted I wanted to bring a piece of the Bahamas to the stage. So, you know, I wanted, I wanted my set to look like the beach. Mm -hmm. So we had fishnets, we had sand, we had raw sea moss everywhere. And then we had like... I want to see it. Can you still using my phone, Kai? <laughs> you need it? <clears throat> You do need it, but you need it back. Okay. Oh, girl, I got you. I want. I want to see. I actually want to see it. Hold yeah. On. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Keep going. Keep going. But yeah. Um. So we we built the stage to look literally like a beach, and um. I went. I went there and I started my pitch. You know, I started with, hey, like, hey, sharks, what's going on? Like, you know, I started off with a lot of energy just to keep that momentum going. And uh, I mentioned that I was born and raised in the Bahamas, which my country loved. You know, I went back home to the Bahamas um, and uh, they just showed so much love. The Prime Minister met with me. Everyone was so proud, you know, that we made oh, national yeah. news. <laughs> Oh, I see it. I see yeah. it. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, like the beach with the palm trees and all that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kevin Hart looking little. That's what's up. Oh, that's, yeah, this is awesome, man. Do you still remember your pitch? Yeah. Um, not Give me a 100%. little bit of the pitch. Give me a little bit of the pitch. What's going on, Sharks? My name is Alexio Gibson. I'm born and raised in the Bahamas, and today I wanted to share with you a sea moss. What is it? It's a supermarine algae that contains 90% of the minerals that the human body needs. Yeah, that's how I started. <laughs> uh, what made your pitch so amazing? Now, you said a lot of people, you, like you're always on the top list of ranked pitches. You what know, made it so good? You know, when I read the comments under like the YouTube videos, the TikTok videos, the, the two things that they brag about, they talk about the most is one, my confidence during my pitch, like how, how smooth it was, like I didn't really mess up. Mm -hmm. And then two, uh, my humility. People would be like, man, this is a really humble guy. Like we want him to win. Yeah. You know, and but it was those two things. In fact, uh, a lot of interviews I had right after the show, they were like, how are you so chill and calm and confident up there? And my response has always been the same. I had no other choice. It's like I had a successful business. And from watching past episodes, there are some people that got trashed on that show, their yeah. brand. And a couple of months after the show, they're out of business. And I'm like, I mm. have no room to fail here. So Shark Tank can make or break your business. Oh, yeah, it absolutely can. It could make you or break you, good PR or bad PR, you know? And I, I took it as a personal, personal obligation to bring it all the way home mm -hmm. because one, I had a successful business already. And two, I'm on the biggest platform and I'm talking about SEMA, something that's culturally driven. You know, all my friends and family back home that, that die for CMOS, have CMOS companies, even my competitors, you know, most of my competitors are black owned, Hispanic owned people. And it's like, I have to bring this home for the entire CMOS community. Oh, when you say die for CMOS, what do you mean? Dive. Um, well, CMOS, there's a couple ways you, you can find CMOS in the ocean. Uh, there's wildcrafted that's literally, you know, growing on top of coral rocks. It's at the bottom of the ocean. And then there's a, a sustainable way to grow it where uh, farmers on the island will, will die for it, clip a piece of it, and then bring it to the shallow areas of the beach where it's easier to harvest so you don't have to dive all the time. It's oh, like, hold on, I don't understand. You said they'll go to... The deep part of the ocean, clip a piece of it? It's, it's called like cloning. You, you ever had like maybe your grandmother saw some flowers in someone's yard. Mm. She snip a little piece of it, bring it home and regrow it. My grandma didn't steal. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't well, well, on the islands where I I'm from. I was raised like that, brother. I don't yeah. know. 
<laughs> no, but you know, not literally stealing, but but like growing up on the island, my grandmother, she went to one of her girlfriend's house and, and they were growing like a jasmine flower mm-hmm. and she liked the way it smelled. She would she, she didn't know exactly where to cut it on the tree oh, to could, replant yeah. it. Um, so she can start growing it herself at home. Oh. So, you know, seeing once acts the same way. So you would have people that would find it wild crafted and then they'll bring it to a shallow beach that no one swims at, you know, uh, probably like a remote beach and they'll regrow it and in very shallow waters. And there's pros and cons with that. Uh, pros are it's sustainable. You know, if you steal all the wild crafted sea moss from the ocean, you're taking away. First off, it alkalines, uh, alkalizes the ocean. Um, it, cl- it cleans the ocean. And then a lot of uh, animals in the sea use it uh, to hide like little little small uh, creatures. Mm-hmm. They'll lay their eggs there, nest, um, hide from predators. And some will even eat it for its nutrients. So you kind of rob the ocean of that whole ecosystem mm-hmm. if you just, especially as big as sea moss is getting. So what most people are doing in a sustainable way is leaving the natural sea moss in the ocean and just regrowing it in a different part. Um, and the, the pros with that is because it's on the surface, because it's a shallow water and uh, the sun can penetrate uh, easier photosynthesis and the sea moss grows a lot better thicker i, I want to say even more nutrient dense like faster too yeah. a lot faster yeah. you know so that's how most uh sustainable sea moss uh farmers are doing it now because they don't want to they don't want to rob the ocean of its natural jewel but yeah th- what's the other way in terms of like you there's some people that just go to the bottom of the ocean they yeah, say yeah. they lose their, li- their lives going after this stuff well i mean not you don't think like titanic depth you know it's that's not, how i was thinking like, <laughs> no nothing i was thinking like, like blood diamond of the sea you know what no I mean? like uh like I, I know a diver in jamaica for example they have beautiful sea moss in jamaica too where you might be in an area where the depth is like 15 feet 10 10 to 20 feet you know nothing too crazy mm-hmm. um and, and you can you can get a, a healthy healthy uh, bunch of it so it's not like you know you're going deep 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 because uh, most of this stuff grows on top of coral and stuff gotcha. like that. Okay. So, you know, you could usually see coral from the top of the water, especially okay. if it's the Bahamas, clearest waters. You know, you can literally see the coral while you're jet skiing. You're looking down. You can see it. Gotcha. It's gotcha. so clear, you know. So um, so it's not that deep. Gotcha. Okay. So you're going through your pitch. And what we see is maybe... How, how long did they air? 15 minutes of it? Yeah, uh, they. my episode was about 13 minutes long. Oh, 13 minutes? Yeah. How long was the actual negotiation? About 50. 50, about 50 minutes, minutes, almost an hour, yeah. Gotcha. I heard sometimes it was like three-hour negotiations. Oh, yeah, I've heard of those too. Thank God that wasn't me. Yeah. <laughs> we had four offers on the table out of the five sharks. Uh, Kevin opened the door. He, uh, he was the first shark to give us an offer, and in a sense, he even helped, helped me close and pitch. What was his offer? His offer... Uh, he wanted the ten percent, uh, twenty sorry twenty percent for uh, the five hundred thousand I was offering, and that's when the negotiations. Well, he started. actually ruined it. You know what I mean? <laughs> he started high, and then everybody's like, "I'm not going lower than that." But where he helped was in the explanation of why CMOS was so popular. So Lori, uh, Mr. Wonderful, Barbara, they were trying to figure out like, why are people buying this? Like, well, you know, and. They even said, this looks like baby food. Why are people buying this, you know? And Kevin jumped in and said, hey, and this is why I like it so much, too, because I be eating all my baby snacks, too. <laughs> it is like, like baby food. So, it is. Yeah, sure. it's like. Can my kids eat it? Probably not. Yeah, you know? kids kids eat it. Uh, parents give it to their kids. They'll use, they'll make peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and they'll replace the jam with, like, strawberry sea moss gel, uh-huh. you know, and little, little hacks like that, you know? Yeah, so okay. parent, parents give it to their kids, uh, put it in their milk, all kinds of... I know me as a, a, as a toddler, my, uh, my grandparents used to put sea moss gel in my, in my milk, you know, wow. even as a kid, you know. Gotcha. Just, okay. Yeah, so... All right, so, so uh, Mr. Wonderful and Laurie, they, they had no idea this whole... Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Hold on, is Seamoss a black thing? Yeah, that, uh, essentially, that's what Kevin said on the show. He said, you know, this is a culturally driven uh, product. Oh, that's what Kevin said. Yeah, that's what he said. Oh. And, I, and when they asked me that, that question, it popped in my head. I, I knew the answer, but I'm like, how do I say this without it coming what off? What was the of, question? Uh, you know, why are people buying this? Yeah. Or like, how do people know about this? It's a black and, thing you wouldn't understand. <laughs> yeah, there's no way I could have said that. So it's like, <laughs> how do I say that without saying that? <laughs> you know? And thank God, Kevin jumped in. 
And he said it, and I'm like, you can say it, I can't, right. <laughs> you know? But, you know, he pretty much said, hey, this is a culturally driven product. He is like, it almost feels like a drug deal when you get it, because you have to know someone that made it in their kitchen, and mm -hmm. he, that was like, uh, you know, him li lightening the mood. And he explained it, and then I chimed in and said, yes, this stuff grows like wildflower in the Caribbean, you know, uh, Tanzania and Africa, Venezuela, Ireland, you know, just naming a couple of places that it just grows naturally. And uh, explaining that this is really cultural, but now because of the pandemic, uh, the information is bleeding out. Just the same way, like, you know, people are finding out about ashwagandha now and lion's mane. And these things have probably been culturally known to certain demographics their whole life. But now we're hearing about it. Uh, maca root, uh, it's a it's a herb, um, a root that grows at the top of, of the mountains in, in Peru. And mm -hmm. it, it boosts our testosterone, too. It's really, really good for you. Maca root went on a craze these last five years, but oh, wow. Peruvians have no, used it in war <laughs> back in the day, wow. you know, uh, for strength and stuff like that. So I was, the explanation was CMOS is the same way. It's been around for over 300 years, but it's starting to bleed from one, sm one small little demographic of Caribbean people to now you see Kim Kardashian using it in her smoothies and posting it. You, you know, and it's bleeding everywhere now into pop culture. And you're from the Bahamas, right? Yeah, born and raised. So you're from this culture where you used to have it in your bottle. Yes, yes. How does it make you feel knowing that this will soon be exploited and you, mm. they're, sorry, gonna rob, sorry. they're going to rob the ocean because that's what yeah. people do? Yeah. Well, to answer your question, that's already happening. You go on Amazon and type in CMOS, you'll see 5,000 products that all look the same, yeah. <laughs> like probably produced in the same factory with a different label on it, you know? The thing is, it's like we keep our integrity by making sure our product tastes good. A lot of people were afraid that after Shark Tank, we, we would start watering down our product or using co-packing facilities, which is factories that you teach them the recipe and they make it at, at, at scale. And it's like, no, instead of doing that, I, I invested uh, 1.5 million building our own co-packing facility. You know, we're gonna be uh, the, the Willy Wonka CMOS. We're gonna make our own uh. factory, you know? So these are the things that we're doing to protect the integrity of CMOS but more importantly the transformation factory and then to your point about the oceans because that's, that's another fear uh, of mine too like in the future what happens if, uh, if a huge company like Johnson & Johnson or Quaker or somebody decide to get into the CMOS industry well now they can buy millions of pounds of it drive the prices up and, and it'll be scarce. So what I did, uh, my, the prime minister of my country invited me to sit with him uh, in the Bahamas. And, and we came up with a plan where, where he's actually going to give me crown land. Crown land is when the government pretty much gives you free property mm. because you're doing something so valuable on that property that's opening jobs and stimulating the, the Bahamian uh, uh, economy. So it's like, okay, they can't, they can't buy the CMOS I'm growing. I'm never oh, going to wow. sell it to you, <laughs> you know? So that's, that's the next big project that, that we're starting this year is actually like finding out which, which, which island we wanted on, uh, which beach that's not being used, and, and then, you know, doing the same thing, cloning it, bringing it to the shallow, growing it, and then hiring uh, farmers and fishermen on the island, build another factory on the island, hire people to make the product, and we stimulate the economy. We don't have to worry about being locked out of the industry. Like and that. so these are the plans I have to kind of future-proof ourselves because uh, Mark, Mark Cuban even warned me. He said, now that this has been on Shark Tank, you're going to see CMOS companies popping up 100%. all the time. And, man, our episode didn't even finish airing good enough. <laughs> there was uh, com two companies, uh, they're both here in Atlanta, actually, that took our name and put it next to their company name in the SEO, uh, for SEO purposes, so oh, that wow. when people were Googling us uh, during the show, they were popping up. You're and crafty in Atlanta, brother. Yeah, but uh, you know, there were, there were two black owned companies, uh, different, and, and I followed them, they you followed me. You didn't mean to me. run up on them? I run up on them, I worked oh. for you already, so. Uh, yeah, no, but what I did, 
I mean, my lawyers were already ready to send cease and desist and all kinds of crazy stuff. And I'm like, hey, I, I know I know these guys. I don't know them. Like, we're not friends, but I know of them. And uh, so I just messaged them privately on Instagram. And I said, hey, uh, you may or may not be aware, but, you know, uh, whoever's handling your SEO is, is uh, stealing our trademark. And they removed it immediately. They apologized. Oh, they were yeah. like, hey, you know, I hired someone in the Philippines to do my uh, SEO, which is very common, yeah. you know. And they were like, I had no idea. Like, I have integrity. I wouldn't do that, you know. And yeah. they both removed it immediately. So, you know. It was like we didn't have to take it to legal, yeah. you know. Let's let's see if we can handle it, uh, you know, uh, fairly first. That's good, you know. Okay, so Kev jumps in, lets everybody know it's pretty much a black thing, yeah, right? Yes. And how did what happened to where him and Mark Cuban got together and said, okay, we'll give this brother six hundred thousand dollars? Well, what happened? All right, so Kevin was the first, and then Mister Wonderful made me an offer. And then Barbara made me an offer. Uh, and I was trying to negotiate more money because everybody wanted a bigger percentage. I came there to sell 5%, yeah. but now everybody wants 20%. So I'm like, okay, if you want 20%, uh, I want I want 800000 yeah. And then Barbara was like, I'll give you five fifty. And Kevin uh, uh, offered six, mm -hmm. and Barbara wouldn't budge. She would not budge. So... Barbara and Kevin were like going back and forth trying to trying to get me to choose one of them. Mm -hmm. And in the middle of Barbara negotiating and explaining like why she wasn't going to give more money, Mark nudged him. <laughs> and you can see it in the episode. It's so funny. Like Mark nudged him and they have like this little sidebar. Barbara's in her own world talking to me mm -hmm. and they're literally like negotiating a deal <laughs> while she's negotiating a deal. And then they said, hey. We're gonna do it together, six hundred thousand. And you already know, like I wanted Mark from the yeah, beginning. Yeah, for sure. So I'm like, there's no yeah. way this is happening. There's no way that Mark Cuban and Kevin Hart is partnering up to do business with yeah. me. So you know, I took that deal right away. You know, yeah. and then we 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 hugged it out and you know said the congratulations and I did my uh, B roll exit, mm -hmm. and the rest is history. Congratulations, man! Yeah, um, thank you. And what 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 was the day that it aired, or what was the day y'all made the deal? <clears throat> uh, we filmed in October, and it aired as a season finale in May. October two thousand twenty one. Twenty twenty one. Yeah. Twenty October two thousand twenty one. Yeah. And then it aired uh, May May thirteenth, I believe. May thirteenth, twenty twenty two. Yes. And. So did that contribute to the, what, 16 million you said in 2023? Like them promoting it, putting it on their platform or whatever? Well, uh, here's the thing. Because we were like one of the favorite episodes of, of, of the whole show, they re-ran that episode a lot. Really? <laughs> you know, and I, a big part of it, I think, too, is I know Kevin Hart's not cheap. It's like we're going to get our money's worth, yeah, you know? Sure. Uh, and it was uh, most watched episode. So they played it a lot. And every time they would play it, our sales would spike 100%. Um, but I would say, like, the direct influence from Mark and Kevin hasn't even started yet. Because if you think about it, you don't see our products on any of their pages. We're not in movies yet. We're not in music videos. Mm. We don't have these huge endorsements. And the, the reason why is not because people aren't banging on our door. It's because of the backlog problem. It's like we have to get into this new factory so we can... 10x our production so they haven't posted it shared it no put it in the stadium or nothing like that no not yet that that's su your success is like you grinding yeah yeah grinding this this is really off the strength of my amazing team i have, I have a brilliant marketing team a uh, brilliant uh, operation team wow. uh, and, and a, a great legal team you know and uh so together like i've been spending so much time with my marketing team uh on branding on ads content creating you yeah. know launching Tik tiktok invited us to headquarters because of how well our numbers were wow. just to meet us facebook in invited us to dinner <laughs> you know we haven't taken that offer yet but we did go to, to TikTok already. Oh, wow. And so like to answer your question, this is really the grind, blood, sweat and tears uh, of my amazing team. And that's not to take away uh, from the Sharks at all. They c their influence uh, can't be used yet because it will break us. If that makes sense. Like if, yeah. if Beyonce ate our CMOS right now, we in trouble. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we would be absolutely in trouble. So yeah. like uh, QVC and HSN reached out to Mark and Mark was like, hey, let's 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 push that back to the next to, to next year because we want to give them time to catch up. So wow. they they know their power. 
and um, they know that what we can handle and what we can't because there's such a thing as growing too fast that you you, you break you break out of business mm. you know so once we get into this factory and we can triple yeah. our team size uh, get the uh, Germany is building us uh, custom blenders right now that can do 200 gallons per batch uh, you know we're, we're having like industrial machinery made from scratch for us uh, now oh, where we, we literally gracious. are going to be like the Willy Wonka uh, of CMOS where we could take the demand. We can handle the, the demand. The Bahamas wants our product, the UK, Canada, uh, Colombia <laughs> asked us for our product, GNC. When our, know. when our country asked for your product, what does that look like? So I went to Colombia, met with the mayor. Uh, that's not why I was there, but it just happened that way. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I will give you citizenship if you bring uh, your, your brand here. We'll make it easy. We'll, uh, paperwork, we'll do it really fast. Really? Yeah, because he said it'll create jobs. You know? These are what world leaders care about. Stimulating the economy and making sure that people are fed and that they have work. Hold on. So they're asking you, know? you to build a factory yeah. in their country yeah. and hire their people to work it, of course. Yes, yes. Would they give you a building or you got to? Well, I, I'm sure that'll be a part of the negotiation. It's like, okay, now you have. Hey, they uh, give you some land, a building, citizenship. Everything. Everything. And it's like, okay, I, you know, I can't, I can't wait to take that opportunity one day, you know, and actually meet the demand that we have. Because if truly when we meet the demand, I know for a fact we'll become a nine-figure brand. And then what can't we do at that point? What movies couldn't we be in? What music videos couldn't we sponsor? At that point, we could be on. We could have our own Super Bowl commercial. That's that's my dream. Yeah, yeah I heard it's about ten million dollars. <laughs> wow. You know, but my dream is that I have CMOS on a Super Bowl commercial one day. What were you doing before you was doing all this? Uh, before this, uh, I went to school for biomedical engineering, and I was working for NASA uh, in Washington D.C. So uh, I did that, and uh, I had a. Uh, uh, a videography company, mm -hmm. you know, where, you know, we had freelancers that would go and shoot real estate, infomercials, you know, how to videos for companies and stuff like that. So I, I, I was always into numbers. Yeah. Yeah. But life is, life is different these days. Life is a lot different. Yeah. Married? No, I'm not married. Outside? No. Uh huh? <laughs> nah, I, I'm outside. I'm outside. outside. <laughs> I'm outside, outside. but. <laughs> I'm, I'm so busy though, man. Company. I got to be outside, inside, man, because I'm running my business, you know, making sure everything is done. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I rarely get to go outside, but you know. Do you date? Yeah, I date here and there, you know. You like rich date? Like, what's rich dating? Uh, well, I wouldn't know, but I would imagine from TV, rich date is. Yo, I gotta go over to the UK for a meeting with the mayor. Uh. You know what I mean? Come get flued out. Oh, uh, I see. I see. Let's, let's well, I mean, I, I used to do that with, with my ex, you know. Um, you know, I'd fly her. Like, I flew her to London when I had a meeting in London with my director of paid ads. I had to meet with my uh, email team in, in Ireland, and I took yeah. her with me, you know. So I, I am that guy. It's like, yeah, let's go, you know. You yeah, 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 yeah. I ain't mad at but that. the thing is, it's, it's hard now. It's like, I can't give anybody, I can't give a girl my Instagram page. Immediately, she knows everything, and I don't know, like, why she's there you know yeah. so it's like uh, i try when i do meet uh, women it to be like really really low-key and just kind of like natural like you have no you might know that i'm somebody or at least i'm not a bum because of the way i'm dressed yeah. or where we met like we meet at the breakers or we meet at you know flagless steakhouse or something yeah. in palm beach like okay we know you're somebody but i don't know exactly who you are mm -hmm. you know um but it, it's hard now because you just don't know the motives behind yeah. people and why For they're sure. there what happened to your ex i mean you know it's, i think it's one of those situations where you could uh, two people can be good but just not good together sometimes you know um uh, she was a, she was a great great person we had we had a good time you know uh we had we, we built, uh good memories and stuff like that but ultimately i think we just wanted uh different things so she fumbled <laughs> she fumbled the sea balls bag. <laughs> Sis, come on, man. Just take some accountability. Humble yourself. Say sorry. She has. She, she didn't has. take no accountability. I bet she did. She has. She I, has. I bet she has. She has, yeah. <laughs> she went back to the yeah. streets, realized that there's not a whole lot of sea balls kicks in the streets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she saw the gosh, streets, man. was like, yo, I, you know what? I'm sorry. I was tripping. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> we can't post this podcast no more. <laughs> we love you, sis. Uh, man, you have an incredibly inspirational story. But I think the reason you're so successful is because of your brain, bro. You're really smart. Yeah, thank you, man. You're really, really smart. And I don't think some people, they have a, um, a talent or they're in the right place at the right time or kind of has some sort of connections. And I think all those things, you know, attribute to one success, but I can tell you actually see the whole game. Yeah. You know what I mean? You have a really, really big vision and you're operating uh, out of integrity and it seems like you're extremely strategic and stuff just don't happen to be happening. You design your life that way. Yes. And that's incredible. Hey, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. That's how I try to approach the brand. For sure. So I am going to get a deal. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to get some sort of sponsorship yeah. deal. <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Don't forget about me, y'all. Yeah, I would love that. I would and Don't, don't forget about, I need y'all to really share this episode, blow this episode up. Okay. <laughs> so they see the value in this social proof partnership. Yes. But this really is good. I did not expect it. Yeah. I actually expected to be like phony with it, like, mm, uh, <laughs> this is good. But it really, really is good. And I got to be careful not to eat too much. Yeah. Because this is delicious. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So our, our CMOS gummies launch uh, officially next week. Good. And uh, so. We're well, out now, guys. Yeah. So uh, I'm really excited about this. My whole team is excited about, about launching this. So. Uh, more, more, um, uh, is it more. Sea moss packed in these or the the or oh, the gels put in the gel, gel. okay um I always say the gel is probably the most concentrated form of it. Okay. I mean, outside of eating the raw, <laughs> the raw yeah. sea moss itself, uh, definitely uh, is it's it's more concentrated. It's not that it's more. You, you probably have to take more gummies to match uh, the gel. Okay. All right. Uh, cool. Yeah, but uh, the great thing about the gummies is it's shelf stable. Like you can throw this in your gym bag, mm -hmm. your fanny pack, you know, sure. your, your luggage. You couldn't do that with the gel because it's, it's, it's a perishable. You have mm -hmm. to keep it uh, temperature controlled, yep, yep. you know. So uh, the gels, I, I say, is really convenient for when you're at home. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the gummies, you just take it everywhere with you, you this know. This is awesome, bro. Yeah. Congratulations on your success, man. Hey, thank How you. old are you? I'm 36. 36? Yeah. I'm 39. Yeah. I'm failing. Nah. <laughs> nah A little man. bit. I mean, compared to you. Nah, don't look at kinda, it like that. Kind of. What they say, Colonel Saunders uh, started KFC at sixty three. I always use that to motivate. That doesn't me. motivate me, bro. That doesn't, <laughs> I don't think you feel better, bro. Like, it's gonna be over. <laughs> I don't know. Like Dave, one day you'll get there. Okay, just thirty more years. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nah, this is awesome, man. This, is there anything we didn't discuss? Um, talked about the benefits of sea moss. We talked about your eggs dropping a bag. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you thought it was Shark Tank. Yeah. Did they give you the money yet? Uh, well, so there's a process after the show called due diligence. Mm -hmm. And due diligence is like when you go through everything, profit and loss. You look at how business is performing like after the show. Sometimes these oh. deals can take a year or two to finalize. Me personally, I'm not I'm not pushing pushing for it right now because I'm like I'm I'm silently building an empire. Yeah. You know, back then, you know, we were uh, three and a half million sales. Uh, today, we're at almost forty million in sales. So it's like now when we revisit these numbers, it's like we haven't even launched the gummies yet. We're not on Amazon yet. We're not on TikTok shop. So yet. you can go back and negotiate and say, well, oh, yeah. I was on the show. We yeah. had this conversation, but. Yeah. I can't get twenty percent anymore. Look at the company. Right. Well, renegotiations is, is is very normal uh, for venture capitalists. It's like you know sometimes they negotiate down and sometimes they negotiate up. Like maybe your business isn't doing as well mm. as you said on the show, or maybe it was, but it's not doing as well anymore. The yeah. market has shifted, so you know it's it's fair to the sharks to be able to do their due diligence and say, hey, I still want to do it, or I actually don't want to do it anymore. You know, I think most of us thought like once they say we'll give you this amount of money for this percentage and y'all, they get off the stage and shake hands. Oh, and it's your a life has deal. changed. No, yeah, um, I mean, your, li your life changed in the sense that you're going to be on a platform. If he, you can handle he, it. Yeah, huge. If you can handle it. But to, to, to be to that point, it's like the first time they're hearing about your brand is when you're when you're pitching. That's the very first time. And for them to just sign a dotted line, not taking a, a look into the back door yeah. 
you know, uh, I'm sure they, they would probably sign a lot of bad deals. Yeah. So I, I respect the process, and they love our numbers. So I bet. You know, when we do it, and, and Mark is incredible. To, to this day, I can send him a text or an email, and this guy responds to me within, like, 30 minutes. Oh, wow. Uh, like the, tell him I said, what's up? So much sexual. <laughs> <laughs> Not just like yo, David Chan is a social provider. Just so he knows, just like tell myself what's up. Yeah, but I mean, I, I messaged him just uh, just last month. We uh, a few months ago, we was in Las Vegas for a Shark Tank reunion. It's kind of like a reunion with all the alumni, and he just happened to be in Vegas at the same hotel we were at. Uh, he didn't attend the event because he was uh, it was. Uh, NBA week, mm -hmm. you know, and he has the Mavericks. Oh, yeah. But I was like, hey, you know, I'm uh, I'm literally in your hotel. Like, let me know if if you have time to grab grab dinner. And he was like, I'm gonna see what I can do. But uh, everything is crazy this week with the NBA. Yeah. Um, uh, the Shade Room uh, posted our wanted to post our pitch, and I had to get clearance from ABC oh, wow. and Disney uh, to do so. And I remember I emailed Mark, and I was like, is this possible to get done? And he was like, I'll, I'll handle it. Within 15 minutes, he got the okay. Wow. If I tried to do that on my own, reach out to Disney and, and, and ABC, uh, I had people telling me, like, you're never going to hear from them. Incredible. You know, so he's he's really been a, a huge support. And what I respect about Mark is that even though the, the ink hasn't dried on a piece of paper, he's still giving me access to his incredible team, knowledge, mm. uh, mentorship, everything. He, he's, he's truly he's truly a, a stand-up guy. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Congratulations, my brother. Yes, Congratulations. Yes. This, yes, is, yes. this is a very exciting interview. And... Um, I, uh, I, I really need the sea moss, okay? Yeah. After all, me and my wife love life. <laughs> In terms of energy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I know she always trying to get me to take vitamins and stuff like that, and I don't like them. Yeah. But uh, this is good, man. Yeah. This is really, really good. Well, Congratulations. Uh, we could send you the, we have a bundle on our website called the King and Queens Bundle. It's mm -hmm. literally a package with every single flavor. So uh, I, mm -hmm. I'd love to send you and your wife uh, one of those packages, you know, oh, to stock your fridge up. Yes. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah. I, I can I can I for what? <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh yeah, uh, is it too late to invest? Because I got a couple dollars on yeah. me, bro. Like hold on. But you know, I think uh, I got, it's not on me. It's in my car, huh? Uh, yeah, I am open I got to a couple dollars. For I'm sure. definitely open to investors. You know, uh, as I mentioned to you, this has uh, been a growth year. 2020 has mm -hmm. been a a bleed out year because we, we're spending so much to to grow. So I know eventually. As we grow and get bigger and bigger and we want to do things faster, we're going to have to start raising capital to do so. So definitely open to investors and, you know, with the right partnerships, the right numbers, everything like that. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Well, uh, I'm a partner. Yeah. <laughs> Can you just shake on it just so, just so we yes, don't yes. Forget, bro? Yeah, yes, yes, right? yes, 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 yes. <laughs> All right, this is a Biden contract. Okay? I'll take it to court if we don't do something. No, nah, but I, I am, I'm a fan. Yeah, yeah. I'm a fan of the product, man, and um, it's you're just a you're just a true inspiration, bro. Yeah, thank you very you much. You came up with an idea, started by helping people. You know what I mean? Yeah. And now you've run this multi-million dollar organization, um, soon multi-billion dollar organization, and it's just it's just beautiful to see, man. It yeah, really thank is. you. Oh, so. Can my audience have a promo? I don't. I don't know what the discount. You don't even have to say the discount unless you unless you want to. Yes, yes. But this video will last forever, and I just yes. want a promo code that's going to last forever. If you want it to last forever, I'm going to drop the discount. Uh, so cause I was going to do fifty percent off uh, for your for your listeners. But what, I'll tell you what I'll do. Well, do it now until just hey, listen. If you're listening to this, yeah. The, so 50%? Okay, so here's what I'll do. I'll do 50% off for a certain time. Mm -hmm. And then once that time is over, I'll run an evergreen code that's a permanent discount. But it just Can it be, be the same much. code, though? It'll be the same code. Okay, cool, cool. Same code. So right now, it's 50% off. Unless your right now yeah. is mad later, then it's still going to be a discount. It's just not going to be 50%. So yes. hurry up and just check it out right now. So, okay. yeah, uh, social uh, proof. if you go to our website, you type in social proof, uh, yeah. that'll, that'll unlock your 50% off. And then we'll run an evergreen discount uh, after that. Yes. And that'll truly get to show you uh, the potential of our partnership because we can track every sale that use that code. Yo, please. Yo, <laughs> I, I've asked y'all to do me a personal favor, okay? <laughs> if you support Social Proof, if you watch Social Proof, if you like it, if this podcast has helped you in any way, can y'all please go buy some CMOS? Because I need him to know that I'm an influencer, okay? Yeah. Yeah. I just... 
for morning meetup, if you're listening right now, if you're listening, is it up right now? Is it is good? Morning meetup. Show me, show me your love, okay? <laughs> Go use the code right now. Social proof on what's the website? Uh the transformationfactory.com or cmostransformation.com. Both go to okay. the same site. cmostransformation.com or yes. the cmosfactory.com. Drop the link in there, Zell. Yeah. If you don't mind. The transformation. Just go factory. to, yeah. Put it yes. up there at the website link yeah. at the tab. Just make sure it works. And um, yes, social proof. 50 pr- use the code, man. Please. <laughs> Goodness gracious. I'm trying to get a job here. Okay. <laughs> What's up? Yes. Yeah, I didn't, yeah. First off, Mike, I ask the questions around here. All right, <laughs> leave me alone, man. <laughs> so, why the name the Transformation Factory? All right, so I uh, the Transformation Factory came about uh, based off of my own personal transformation. Um, I used to be five hundred and forty pounds at one point, and mm. uh, I lost over two hundred and fifty pounds. What? And yes, <laughs> I was. Uh, I was in my 20s, and my doctor said I wouldn't live to see 30 if, I, if I didn't do something. Yeah. So the literally, the yeah. literally he was inside. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's the meaning wow. behind our, our our logo. Which, by I the like way, the I don't know if you noticed, but did you notice the our gummy bears uh, look like this guy? We have a custom mold. I so, saw that in the yeah. I saw yeah. that too. Oh, that's yeah. Dope, so man. that's what's unique about our gummies is that we we have our own custom mold so that the gummies actually look like our transformer so the transformer shows awesome. a little guy inside of a bigger person showing uh showing a transformation wow so um my goal was to you know our tagline is become the best version of yourself so we want to create uh, a bigger platform uh, a bigger message and uh, not just selling products but creating a an actual like family system a community system where we're helping each other become the best versions of ourselves. We're using our, our testimonials, our transformation testimonials uh, to encourage others. You know, they may be a, a single mom that has two jobs that, that lost 50 pounds that motivates the next person in that same spot way more than they're inspired by my story. Because, you, know, uh, you know, we live different lives and they see, some, they, they see themselves in someone else that, that transformed. So the bigger picture for the transformation factory in the long run isn't just to add more SKUs, uh, which we are doing, but also to create a, a, a digital playground, uh, almost like our own uh, meta world mm-hmm. where, you know, you're tr- you have transformers. You have people like, you know, you have a little avatar that says David on there, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, and I could look at your stats. I could see how much weight you lost or how much weight you gained, muscle, or like what you ate that day, like kind of like my fitness pal, you know, um, is bringing all those elements in where we can connect and, and, and help. So uh, one thing that I'm starting when I get back home, because I'm still in the middle of my transformation, even though I've lost a lot of weight, you know, I I still want to finish. I want to finish strong. Mm -hmm. So like we're actually going to be uh, filming uh, the workouts, the recipes, everything uh, and sharing it with our with our fan base, showing them showing them see me transform in real time. Mm -hmm. You know, before and afters are great, but, you know, very rarely you see the during. And I think the during is the most important. Like, what For am I sure. actually doing every day? You know? Absolutely. Hey, yes. did y'all go get to see Moss Morning mm-hmm. Meetup? See, if y'all don't know, Morning Meetup, they're watching this live. They get this stuff way before everybody else. But Morning Meetup, <laughs> did somebody order something? Did y'all order something? I hope y'all don't embarrass me, please. <laughs> I think they're doing it right now. Don't worry. I still have influence. I do. Yeah. I'm telling you. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I actually want to get on my weight loss journey. I'm just, I don't know. I just don't be feeling it. Yeah. You know I mean, I don't have the motivation. Will, will CMOS help me with that in terms of like, just, you know, you feel lethargic sometimes, yes. especially after work? Absolutely. This is like, this is like your caffeine. You know, a lot of people that take our products say, man, I have so much energy now that I didn't have before. Um, I've had people that had arthritis in their back, which is probably the worst place to have it because it's such a huge muscle that, that can't even move. I had an elder guy say, I haven't cleaned my garage in years because my back has been under so much inflammation. And he started taking our product. And a week later, he was like, I just cleaned my garage out. I said, wow. I can't believe how, how good I feel. So I've, I've heard it giving people a lot of energy, uh, removing inflammation, you know, uh, and it's also a, a hormonal uh, balancer for women. It increases their estrogen uh, and stuff like that. So it even helps with moods. 
And uh, because it builds, uh, it helps with our testosterone because of the zinc, uh, you know, the higher our testosterone, uh, the, the better our mental clarity. Uh, a lot of men that are depressed uh, also have low testosterone, you know, mm. so testosterone does a lot for us, you know, our mental health and everything. So I, I've even heard people say CMOS changed their moods, you know. Wow. So the thing is, it's giving you what your body needs to thrive. So that's... Uh, it's giving you uh, what, what your body needs to thrive. So whatever that is, whether it's uh, getting rid of mucus, uh, getting over a cold, building fertility, whatever is a missing link, a CMOS is going to give you the minerals uh, to help your body build what it needs to fix itself. Hmm. Is testosterone the major effect for men? It's one of the most important hormones uh, for us. You know. So real quick, uh, and I haven't tried this, but I'll be seeing it on Instagram. <laughs> What's in the little honey pack? <laughs> so it's funny you you asked that. Well, that like <laughs> no, nah, well it's funny you mentioned that. But um, uh, yeah, the honey pack is I, I reverse engineer everything, especially now that I'm in the supplement mm -hmm. business. Um, but it has a, a non FDA ingredient I think called a, a titophil or something like that. But uh, it's it's a uh, it's an ingredient that's not natural. Uh, it's not approved by the FDA yet. You know, there's mixed reviews on if it's good for you or not. Um, the thing is that uh, scares me with products like that is your body becoming dependent on it. Mm. It's kind of like men who take um, uh, testosterone replacement therapy. You know, like people always warn you, your body's going to stop making its own testosterone. If you do that, <laughs> you're going to have to use it the rest of your life. Oh, wow. Uh, you know, and then, you know, men start to see their scrotum shrink and now their fertility is out of the window. You know, Dang. yeah, those are those are common side effects of for putting uh, unnatural uh, testosterone in your body. Or, Hold on, Reese, does know. it work? The honey pack? I was wearing it up. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Try to see walls. Yeah. yeah, so it's like if you, if you need to take that, you know, you probably have a blockage somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, it just means like your blood vessels are tight and uh, it needs to be open so blood can flow. Got it. You know, so CMOS is going to find the infl inflammatory stuff in your body. It's going to find these things. So it's like, do you want to cure it from the inside out? Uh, and and not depend on on a product or or just you know take the packet and just kind of ruin things you know got it got you it know, so all right I yeah. like it man I like it man Alexio thank you so much man yes, I yes. appreciate you coming by this yes. is very enlightening I'm inspired I'm so glad we got a deal done <laughs> and uh, yo make sure y'all said it said the code isn't working can put website. Hey, make sure we got hey, the Michael, code social proof. You're saying the code's not working. One word lot. and two. Yeah. They work, oh, okay. They're working on it right now. No. See, I got some influence, bro. <laughs> thank you. Is that Matt? Matt, thank you so much for showing Alexio that I actually have a little bit. Of, I'm an influencer. A little bit. But, uh, yeah, thanks for coming, man. Uh, got, a, got a question for you before you get out of here. Mm -hmm. um, where do you see yourself in the next five years? Or where do you see yourself accomplishing in the next five <laughs> years? And the only reason I'm asking is because I want to be able to watch this interview five years from today yes. and say, yo, Alexio said he, he was going to do that five years ago. Look, yes. uh, five years from now, I would like to see the Transformation Factory turn in to, to its own world, mm -hmm. literally its own uh, AI world. People are plugged in. We have a, a, a slew of SKUs uh, that's helping people get become the best version of themselves. I see us being global, uh, finally uh, building our first factory in another country, mm -hmm. uh, releasing my first book. Uh, you know, it's already pretty much drafted. <laughs> and uh, also that Super Bowl commercial, you yeah. know, hitting nine figures, being able to do big things like that and, and having really big brand deals. Oh, it's coming. Yes, yes. It's coming for sure. Yes. Because you hit by eight by yourself and you haven't even gotten influence of your partners just yet. So, yeah, yeah that's, I think that's done, brother. All right. Yeah. Thank you, man. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, man. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Well, look, man, yeah. tell everybody how they can connect with you. Yes. Uh, give them the website <laughs> one more time with the promo code and then close us out with a word of wisdom. All right. So you can find me on Instagram at Alexio 2.0, A-L-E-X-I-O-U 2.0. Or you can and you can follow our CMOS page uh, at CMOS Transformation. Our website is CMOS Transformation dot com. Uh, and word of wisdom is that, you know, chase your dreams. 
keep negative uh, environments away. That can be people, that can literally be where you live. Uh, you want to stay around really positive minds, positive people that's going to fuel whatever it is that you're building. Uh, add more belief so that you can go out there and actually do it. Uh, that was a big, uh, a big deal for me is removing anything and anyone around me that said this wouldn't work or that laughed at it or you used to work for NASA. Why are you making CMOS, you know, and, and comments like that, you know, and stay away from the from those energies. If you don't have positive people around you, listen to podcasts, or read a book, you know, until until you start attracting those energies um, and you'll go really far. There it is. Listen, man, we can't yeah. close it out no better than that. Do yourself a favor. Go to the Transform Factory, transformationfactory.com. The transformationfactory.com. CMOS Factory. CMOS Transformation. Tr CMOS Transformation.com. Yes. Uh, use code social proof. Okay, you will get 50% off. Or if you just are seeing this later, then it might be something. But it's going to be something <laughs> off, okay? <laughs> yes, um, yes. But also do yourself a favor, man. Go get you some social proof, meaning go build something, go build it big, and then come on a podcast, start your own podcast, tell everything on your social media. You got to tell your community how you built what you built. It's the only way our community grows. All right? We are out of here. Peace. Yeah. Oh, All right. <laughs> if you like the video that you just watched, click this one. You're going to like this one, maybe even more. Click it right now.